my name is Benny the Bear. And my name is Penny the Pup. And, and we'll be your host today. Thank you everyone for tuning in from home this morning. I'm so glad you're here with us today. And we're so excited to worship with you all. Mm-hmm. But before we begin today's service, Penny, can you give us a quick recap of what we learned last week? Of course. Okay, so last week we read about a man named Naaman who was very sick with leprosy on the outside as well as on the inside with his heart and how a little servant's great forgiveness brought about great healing. Mm -hmm. And through the little girl's forgiveness, God was able to heal Naaman's outer sickness as well as his inner sickness of pridefulness. And God did it for free. And we ended our service last week with a special challenge. Mm -hmm. And our special challenge was just to look at our own hearts and ask ourselves if there's anyone that we need to forgive. And just like the little girl chose to forgive Naaman, we should also choose to forgive those who have hurt us as well. Mm -hmm. How was the challenge for you, Penny? Well, it was kind of hard. Like you mentioned last week, it's not easy to forgive someone who hurt you or those who you love around you, but... It's what God would do, so I tried my best to forgive too. Mm, Yeah, it's really not easy, but I'm so proud of you for trying, Penny. Was there anyone specific that you were trying to forgive? Mm, Well, I won't say his name, but there's this boy at school who always makes fun of me and says mean things to me that hurts my feelings. And, well, last time I saw him, he said something mean again. Mm. But you know what I did? What'd you do? I walked right up to him and I... You, what did you do? I forgave him. Whoa, wait, what? and then what happened? I think he was confused because he asked me why. And I just told him because God loves him. And so I should forgive him and love him too. No matter what he says or does that hurts my feelings. But also that he should be nicer because that's what God would want for him to do too. Wow, Penny. And then what happened? He started crying. He started crying? Yeah. Why? I I didn't know why at first, but it turns out at his old school, he was made fun of a lot, and there were a lot of mean kids around him. So when he moved to our school, he felt like he needed to be mean too to make new friends. So he apologized for being mean, and, and now we're friends. Wow, Penny, that's so awesome. And I'm so, 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 so proud of you for choosing to forgive him, even when it was hard. And then also for sharing um, about Jesus and how Jesus loves with your new friend. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to meet him one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome, Penny. Thanks for sharing. But we're going to close our eyes now, everyone, and let's bow our heads and put our hands together, and let's pray for today's service. Mm -hmm. Dear Jesus, Thank you for another beautiful Sunday where we can come together to worship and learn more about you together. Thank you for teaching us what it means to forgive and why we should forgive others. And um, please help us to keep choosing to forgive even when it's hard. And, And please be with all the teachers as they lead us today and with all of us as we listen and participate. And thank you for who you are and loving us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thanks for praying for us, Penny. No problem. But what time is it? Worship time! Yeah, that's right! And in just a few moments, Teacher Tess and Teacher Crystal will lead us in a time of worship. And this week, we're going to sing Forever God is Faithful and Penny was the other one. Reckless Love. How does it go? I forgot. Okay, well, we'll we'll see it later, so it's okay. (laughs) But everyone, let's stand up from where we're sitting and take a step back from our screen so we have enough room to move our arms and our legs around during worship. Mm -hmm. And let's all try to sing as la 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 loudly as we can as we follow along with Teacher Tess and Teacher Crystal, okay? Okay. Okay, Benny, let's go. Let's go.
His love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. Forever.
There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no lie you won't something, lie you won't something, coming after me. All the over. Well, I think we're starting. Oh, I, um, oh, hi, sorry, I'm sorry. I was just looking out the window and um, I'm here. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, great job, everyone. You know what? You are also awesome as always. But do you know what time it is now? Bible story time. Time. Bible story time. Do it again. Bible story time. time. Yay! And this week, we're going to read about a man named John the Baptist. And he had a very important job. And his job was to prepare the way for Jesus to come. So he was building a road for Jesus to come? Actually, I don't know. Maybe it was a bridge, but I just know he had to prepare the way for Jesus to come. Um, but I think we'll just have to listen to the story and find out. Okay. okay? Okay, everyone. So let's take our seats again and let's get nice and comfy and keep your eyes and your ears open to hear about how John the Baptist prepares the way for Jesus to come mm -hmm. and to hear the story that Teacher Tess and Teacher Chris are going to share with us today, okay? I'm so excited. Me too. Let's go, Penny. Good morning, Good morning, everyone. everyone. Happy Sunday. And thank you for joining us this week. We're so glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. This week, we're going to be reading a story about a man named John the Baptist who was born around the same time as Jesus. And God had a special job for John, and it was to get everyone ready for Jesus' arrival. Mm -hmm. So let's get started with today's story. About the same time Jesus was born, another baby was born. His name was John and God had a special job for him. John was going to get everyone ready for Jesus. The day John was born, his dad knew God's promise to Abraham was coming true. God was sending the rescuer, and he was so happy that he sang a song. Because God loves us with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love, heaven is breaking through. He is sending us a light from heaven to shine on us like the sun, to shine on those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So John grew up and, well, to tell you the truth, he was a bit unusual. He lived in the desert. He wore itchy, scratchy outfits made of camel hair. He had a big, big bushy beard and long, long scraggly hair. And here's the oddest thing of all. He only ate locusts short for big, creepy, crunchy grasshoppers, which he dipped in honey to disguise the taste, probably. But God sent John to tell his people something important. Stop running away from God and run to him instead, John said. You need to be rescued. I have good news. The rescuer is coming. Make your hearts ready for him. Yes, get ready because your king is coming back for you. Great crowds listened to John. They were sorry they had sinned, and they wanted to stop running away from God. They wanted to be rescued. So John baptized them, which means he plunged them in and out of water. It showed that they wanted to follow God and begin a new life. One day, John was baptizing people in the Jordan River, as usual, when he looked up and saw a man walking down to the water's edge. God spoke quietly to John. This is the one. John's heart leapt. This was a moment he'd had waited for all his life. Look, John said as Jesus came down into the water, but his voice came out as a whisper. He couldn't make it any louder. It was all he could do to even speak. The Lamb of God, God's best Lamb, who takes away the sins of the world. Will you baptize me too? Jesus asked. Who am I, John asked, to baptize you? It's what God wants me to do. Jesus said, so John baptized Jesus. Suddenly, it was as if someone had drawn back curtains in a dark room, as if heaven itself had opened because a beautiful light broke through the clouds and shone down onto Jesus, bathing him in gold. Beads of water glittered and sparkled like tiny diamonds in his hair. A white dove flew down and gently rested on Jesus, and a voice came down from heaven, it was clear and strong and loud so everyone could hear. This is my own son, and I love him, and I am very pleased with him. God said, listen to him. Heaven had broken through, 
and the great rescue had begun. The, the end. end. <laughs> wow, thank you, Teacher Tess and Teacher Crystal, for sharing that awesome story with us today. I guess John wasn't out in the desert to build a road or a bridge. He was there to help prepare the hearts of God's people to receive Jesus. But how were they supposed to prepare their hearts? What does that even mean? Well, do you remember what John was preaching to the people? Like what he said? Oh, I do. He was like, stop running away from God and run to him instead. Mm -hmm. You need to be rescued. I have good news. Good the news. rescuer is coming. Yeah. Make your hearts ready for him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Get ready because your king is coming back for you. Your king is coming back for you. That's right. And as they listened to John, the people started to realize that they were sorry they had sinned. And they mm -hmm. actually did really want to stop running away from God. And they really wanted to be rescued. And so mm -hmm. they confessed their sins. And do you remember what happened next? Oh, yeah. John plunged them in and out of the water. Mm -hmm. He baptized them in the water, which showed that they wanted to follow God and begin a new life. It was like a sign, like, blue, 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 baptism. Oh, okay. So John was helping people prepare their hearts for Jesus by helping people see the sin in their lives and helping them confess and baptizing them. Yeah, bingo! <laughs> but did you know that we must also prepare our hearts for Jesus too? John taught us that the way to prepare our hearts is to repent of our sins. But do you know what it means to repent, Penny? I do. When someone repents, it means they turn away from their sin and follow God. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it's not always easy to see that we have sinned against God. You know, we all probably like to think that we're pretty good. And, you know, even if we do mess up from time to time, we usually try to follow the rules and be nice. And, um, you know, we feel pretty good about ourselves. And, you know, I'm not that bad. You know, someone else is worse than me. But no matter how good we are on the outside, our hearts are still like dry deserts without Jesus. I guess the problem with sin is that it's on the inside. So even though we might do nice things on the outside, our hearts are still sinful and far from God. So no matter how good we try to be, we still need Jesus to save us. Yeah, Penny, that's right. So that's why we also have to work on our hearts and prepare our hearts for Jesus too. It sounds like a hard job preparing our hearts for Jesus. What, what if I make a mistake along the way? Does that mean I have to start all over again? Hmm. Well, preparing our hearts for Jesus doesn't mean it has to be perfect. It doesn't mean we have to be perfect. And it doesn't mean that we need to give up or start over just because we start to make a mistake. It just means that we need to keep on relying on God and keep on repenting and trusting in Him. Like every step along the way, we do it over and over again. Oh, okay. So I don't have to be perfect? <laughs> No, Penny, God loves you for you, not because of what you can or can't do for him. Whew. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, I, I, that's, it's helpful for me too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so last week, we read about a man named Naaman who was very sick with leprosy on the outside as well as on the inside of his heart. And we read about how a little servant's girl, awesome forgiveness, brought about awesome healing in his life. Mm -hmm. And through their, the little girl's forgiveness, God was able to heal Naaman's outer sickness as well as his inner sickness of pridefulness for free. Mm -hmm. And today, we read about a man named John the Baptist who was given a very important job from God to help everyone get ready for Jesus' arrival. He helped everyone by getting ready uh, blah, blah, blah. He helped everyone by get, helping them prepare their hearts for Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Good job, Penny. And preparing our hearts for Jesus doesn't mean that we have to be perfect before we can start following Him. In fact, it just means over and over again, we have to keep on repenting and trusting God. And in the Bible, again and again, we see that Jesus calls very, very imperfect people to follow Him and to know Him. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves us even though we are broken and sinful and we don't have any we don't have to do anything to make us more lovable to him. Mm -hmm. Jesus already loves us perfectly even though we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. So this week, let's prepare our hearts for Jesus. And that just means, you know, really simple. We can spend time talking to God and admitting to him that our insides are sinful and that we need to be saved. Mm -hmm. It's just repenting and turning away from our sins and choosing to follow God this week. So that's our challenge. 
admit that things in your heart are sinful and that we need to be saved. Amen. That, that's a great idea, Benny. <laughs> okay, everyone, let's put our hands together and let's close our eyes and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this awesome reminder and for John the Baptist's awesome life that we can remember that even though sometimes we think we're all okay on the outside, that inside in our hearts is where you really look and where it really matters. And so this week, God, please help us to repent. Help us to see the areas inside our heart that are not good and help us instead to turn to you and to choose you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us perfectly even when we are not perfect. We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen! Amen! Amen. Thanks for praying for us, Benny. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and I can't believe our time together is already over. It, it goes by so quickly every week. Yeah, but it's okay. We'll see them next Sunday. That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. So we really hope you enjoyed today's service, mm -hmm. and you have a great week. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about our challenge, okay? And we'll hear about it next week. See you soon. See you. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye.